Okay, so now what I've been waiting for for a dozen unit tests um, is completing the actual function, making it so it's not a stub. Okay, and you know, this is going to be the part I'm going to spend the least time on. Why? Uh, you've taken other programming courses before. Uh, you know roughly how to go about, once we've reached this part, how to do this. Uh, I want to emphasize, you know, making your unit tests, making them first, uh, how to run PHP, uh, and how to run it not through the web, and then later we'll get to running it through the web. So, okay. Um, yeah, so great, return. I don't want this as a stub. What I'm going to want to do here, I want to take the first half of word one. Okay, well, no problem. I can say, uh, I'm going to take the first half of a function, for, for, sorry, first half of a, a, a word, a string. Ah, okay. Uh, I'm not sure, but I can do a quick Google search, PHP substring, it'll come up and say, hey, there's a function called substr. Okay, great. Substr, and you give it three, in three inputs, three arguments, the word that you want to take part of, uh, and then two numbers, zero and then, gosh, well, and this is now where test cases come in. I'm gonna go down to, say, the Christiansburg. Christiansburg, I want to take the, the first half of that, right? And what I do, I counted up how long was the whole string and then divided that by two, rounding down. Okay, so I'm gonna take, uh, uh, take the string, find out how long it's, how do I find out how long it is? Oh, there we are, another quick Google search. Uh, and I'm not, I'll have to check myself here. What is it actually called? Uh, it's a Sterlen. Let's see, let's do a search PHP length of string. Um, and sure enough, the very top hit is what we want, and it's the function sterlin. Okay, great. Uh, going back here. So I'll go ahead, I want to go to sterlin of word one divided by two. Okay. Take word one, go from zero up to, but not including, hmm, I'll have to see exactly what this gives us. Um, but yeah, it's half the length. Okay, that's gonna be the first half. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna do all that. I'm gonna put, go put that in a new variable. So uh, I'll call that variable first half. First half. Uh, one thing in PHP, your variables, again, we see they start with a dollar sign. Uh, you don't need to declare them, you just sort of start using them. Okay, first half gets that thing there. Uh, what else do we want? Well, well, the second half of my answer. And that's also going to be a substring. I'm going to take the substring of, well, the second word, or two, starting where? And going up to where or something. Um, starting where? Here I want to start halfway through the word. Sterlin of word two divided by two. Um, and we'll come back in a second to say, hey, does this, well, I'll, I'll mention right now, uh, in Java, you might be used to saying, hey, if I take two integers and divide them, if I take uh, seven slash two in Java, it will come back and it doesn't give me three and a half, it gives me three. It actually truncates uh, doing integer division. Hey, by dumb luck, or maybe, maybe foresight on your boss's part. Uh, by dumb luck, this division by two, if it's doing truncating, is exactly what I want. So, uh, okay, cool. Um, so that gives me the starting point I want. It turns out, if you go look at the documentation for a substr uh, in PHP, in Java, you give it the start index and then the ending index, or one after the ending index or the first index you don't want, the first index you do want, and then the next index that you don't want. Um, that's not how it works in PHP. I'll let you read the documentation for substr. Uh, that second argument is actually the length of the result. And there's a, another little caveat. If you call it and only give it two inputs, if you call substr and only give it where to start, it will take from the start all the way up to the end, which is what we want for our variable second half. Okay, and then I want to return first half plus second half. Okay, now I think we're finally done. So it should be where that looks all good. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of guessing I've used my Java knowledge here, but uh, 
besides putting the dollar signs up and not actually put it in declaring types anywhere seems kind of similar maybe okay so let's go ahead this uh, and run this php my function blend1.php and i think i'll see a bunch of lines that say the actual output and an answer and then expected output and the same exact same thing so i think this code sure seems correct what oh my goodness uh what's going on here Scroll down, just look at those test cases. I had actual was zero and I desired, I guess that's one of my empty strings. Actual was zero and I desired Z. Actual was zero, I desired, oh my goodness, my function's returning zero. Um, a string zero or maybe the number zero. PHP can be, make it hard to distinguish between those two sometimes. Uh, how do I, we, we run into a problem, how do we fix this? Uh, go through and trace through exactly what the computer was doing. And this is now why I have started with the small test cases and why I put them up, up first. I can go ahead and take Christiansburg and Virginia and think about the length and the substring and count up how many letters. And it, I can do it, but, and I can follow along what the computer will be doing, but, you know, I also have this easy test case that failed. Empty string and empty string. And I'm a little bit easier. I, what is the length of the empty string? Zero. Was zero divided by two? I can do that in my head. I'm, I'm pretty good at that. So having these simple test cases first and finding out that even they're failing is going to make it easier to recreate what's going on. So I'm a little bit confused. So let's go ahead and I took, so suppose word one and word two are both the empty string. I'm taking the substring of empty string from zero up to, uh, that should be the length of, the empty string divided by two, zero divided by two. Let's go ahead and try that. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, aside from my editor, and this is now kind of cool, you can run PHP interactively. If you say PHP-A and don't give it a file name, it'll come back and be an interactive shell and I can do things like echo two plus three, great. I can go ahead and say uh, something like, uh, first half gets substring of empty string comma uh, zero comma and then it was length of empty string divided by two I think that should be zero let me try this and see if I get back the empty string okay uh, oops it's not called substring it's called substr okay uh, echo f H, well, it doesn't look like anything. Uh, echo sterlen of fh, I guess I can do that. Um, it turns out there's something you can even do called bar dump in PHP. Um, and that's confusing for now. Ignore that. Pretend I didn't do that. I'm now sad. Uh, we'll talk about PHP and types and what it does. Um, okay, but it turns out uh, fh, uh, I can do the other thing. Well, no, no, I'm not even going to do that. Um, FH really does seem to be the empty string. Okay. And the other thing I did was I returned, uh, I said, what is the empty string plus the empty string? So if this worked for the first half, I think second half is also the empty string. Uh, empty string plus, oh, that's my problem. It's not that it wasn't the first two lines, getting the first half of the word and getting the second half of the word. Um, because it looks like here, empty string plus empty string is zero. What the? Okay, well, we'll have a future lecture on this, but uh, here's the answer. Plus means arithmetic, fair enough. Uh, if you want to concatenate two strings, it's not plus. Plus only is numbers. Uh, concatenate two strings is dot. I go, well, and again, the script, the terminal, this interactive windows annoying PHP doesn't really show the empty string. How about, or echoing the empty string, echo a, b dot c, d, get a, b, c, d. Okay. What's my point? I went to the terminal window. I used my easiest test case and traced the, easy, the first one that went wrong, which in our case was the first one, first test case replicated that work by hand and saw where things sort of seemed to diverge from what I thought they were to what they should be. Um, and it 
turns out it was this plus was not working, a Google search or something like that would give me a string append. So let's go now go and edit our file and don't return the first half plus second half, but first half string append second half and run this program php blend one.php. And now I get, okay, I see radiv, radiv, Christiania, Christiania, snin, snin, row, etc. And I can scroll up. It's, I have this window made really tiny. But yeah, actual, looks like nothing and desire nothing, zz, og, og, sma, sma. Okay, now I think we got a good answer. Okay, uh, what was the upshot of all this? A few mechanics, how to run PHP from the command line, how to run it, maybe this interactive shell. But the real thing that we spent these three little videos on is write test cases, write them first, and put your simplest test cases first and have simple, trivial test cases. Uh, that will be required for all functions we go on to write in this class. So, um, And looking at that file, um, we have the function here and we have the test cases. What does it count to be a test case? Some people say a test case is that they write their code and they turn that in. And I say, well, where are your test cases? I'm like, oh, well, I ran it by hand and it's, it seemed to work. That's not going to cut it. To be a test case, you must have three things, okay? To be a test case, you must give me, or, or what I'll see is I'll see a, a file and then I'll see a bunch of calls to the, they'll print out blend of smoke and fog and they'll print out blend of Christiansburg and Virginia. And I'm like, okay, great, but what is the answer supposed to be? Like, Christiansburg and Virginia takes me a while to figure out what the expected answer was. They're like, well, I ran it, and I, yeah, it kind of vaguely looked correct. And I'm like, well, too bad, because the students who do that often mistakes get through. You, you get in the mode of just visually scanning it and, and letting things go by. Uh, to be a test case, you must have three things. You must have the actual out output. You must, you know, so actually call a function with, with actual inputs. Uh, you must tell me what the desired result is. If you don't give me the desired result, if you don't actually write it down, it ain't a unit test, okay? Uh, and then the third thing we need, well, I'm going to defer that to a little bit later, or you can look in the notes where I mention it in a footnote. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. Uh, I think you're good to go and write your own small sample function as in uh, the first homework. Okay, take care. Boop, boop, boop. Bye.